al torneo de uno contra uno. Y en el lado azul tiene ojos de sueco, manos de coreano, pero es murciano, Hacho es de Murcia. And in the other corner, his opponent, it's the GPL's all-star support. The women love him and the men, they want to play like him. It's Ron O.P. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, only one man can advance to the next round. Good luck. Hello, everybody. Crepo still here. First day I had the fish, Joe. Can't get Went rid of you. Up and up, got Zarin. Even better right now, Azale. Thank you, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I uh, love some 1v1s myself, and very excited to see how this plays out. Yeah, I hope the crowd uh, noise can be picked up right now, because the entire crowd is uh, chanting expect again. You saw him go for the little cheeky, let's uh, just get rid of my headset real quick yeah. to uh, <laughs> hear my name being chanted, and now he's getting ready for another 1v1, this time against the support. So technically, it should be easy. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen things go the way that they're expected to, though. We saw, oh, pretty easy first match for Faker. Oh, I guess uh, not. Pretty easy first match there for Bjergsen. Oh, oh, I guess not. So uh, we'll have to see because the GPL guys are very prepared yeah. for the 1v1s. They've actually been smashing across the board in the fun modes and the 1v1s because, uh, you know, they talk about how much they love to do this after their scrims. They're 1v1ing. They're playing these other modes because that's kind of their their love. So, yeah, you get people that prepare for the tournament. On the other side, you have somebody like Jankos who goes <laughs> up against <laughs> one of the best players in the world, decides to play a champion he's never played before and is then uh, surprised that he loses. Hey, man, you got to check those boxes. He's like, oh, I never played it before. If I play one game, easy peasy, you know? It's only in Korean. Anyways, we're back into game here, guys. For the first 1v1, it is, again, Expeke versus Ron OP. Pretty standard ban so far. Yeah, definitely. And like they talked about on the desk, we haven't really seen Nasus. We haven't seen anyone kind of cheese it out and try to go for the 100 CS. Yeah. I'll be interested to see if people are still going to just go for kills or if people are going to be willing to kind of play the more lame way or whatever you want to call it and just farm it out. I think the resurgence of like a Darius and Olaf is being seen here though for people who feel just individually weaker. Yeah. They just kind of take the shotgun approach. One, one round in the shell and just yeah. go and uh, hopefully you win. If not, you get kited and you lose. Yeah, and it works really well because a lot of those champions, so you get a couple levels and you can all in. It's super effective. So even with some pretty shaky execution here or there, we've seen people get like, what, 20 HP away from getting wins? Yeah, 1v1s have been ending very closely. I was looking at what other tr farm champions there could be as well because initially I was like, Nasus is welcome to do the same thing. I thought about Heimerdinger on cast yesterday. I didn't hear like any like negative points. And then somebody tweets at me, he's like, Bro, you know, like, turrets count for CS, right? And I'm like, uh -oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's not the best idea. All right, Lowey's off the board. Harmony yeah, is off the board. Off the board. <laughs> yeah. Farming tentacles, but yeah, there, there definitely are some. I guess we wouldn't really want to use Malzahar then either. Yeah, because the void links, especially. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, you need perfect CS to, to keep up. Hopefully, somebody told Ron P this. He won't actually lock in the Heimer. Hey, I mean, none of them have gone to CS yet, right? Maybe yeah. you can get a kill, maybe you can get an all in. Ironinger's all rockets are actually a ridiculous amount of They're damage. They're insanely strong. Yeah, people underestimate that, but if you can land a stun and get a full connection, you will kill that guy. And yeah, Peke. If, you, if you're just joining, by the way, guys, Peke played uh, a mean <laughs> Garen earlier. His build left a little bit too, desi too hey. desired, but hey. got the double kill. If you can kill Faker, you can kill Ron OP, so maybe he'll <laughs> go with that, that Garen. It is Cassiopeia versus Draven. All right, that definitely needs an exhaust if you're expecting You do not want this Draven yeah. coming at you. Yeah, it's going to be pretty scary. Uh, I'll be interested to see how this goes, because Cassiopeia actually has a ridiculous strong, even level two. Like, if you can hit your Q, you can just go for all-ins very early. The problem with this champion becomes mana. You run out of mana very easily, and it's that's why you need the tier. You need these kind of builds. And in a straight-up 1v1, that's not the kind of item you want. So Peke, I think, is really going to have to choose his moment and dump the mana there and win the fight there. This may be one of those games where it's better that you, you pull the wave backwards on the yeah. first wave. You just let them push, then bounce, and then kind of 
Same thing Mala did versus Fake. You kind of ride the wave into the trade, then go for like a level three all in with a full mana pool. Because otherwise, again, just like you said, you're just gonna run out of mana. Yeah, and it's also kind of decision making here. How much mana are you willing to spend on the creeps, on yeah. CSing and stuff? None of it has gone to 100 CS. And if if you go low on mana, the Draven can keep pushing you in, make you stay around, and they can go for that sort of CS win. So uh, it's definitely a lot of back and forth. And at the side of Ron OP, he's basically looking for Peke to do a bad Q. You know, that's where he's aiming for both creeps and run a P himself. The second that happens, takes that axe, throws it in the face, and just wants to uh, keep, you know, chain hitting them in Peke's face. Yeah, he certainly does. And, and it's also one of those things where he can almost play it a little bit like kind of those those mana wins. You know, we've seen Tom Kench kind of do a, a similar thing. This is obviously a very different version, but assuming he is playing Warlords, assuming he is going to have that much lifesteal, if you can make Peke spend a lot of his mana, it'll be interesting. Rano P, according to this, is right now playing Thunderlords on Draven. Oh, wow. That's okay. actually well. going for an early all-in, pretty much. Basically saying, you know, level 3, level 4, going to use that Tunnel Lord's damage. I'm going to check what Xpeke is running. Yeah, that would be really interesting. He's yeah. also running very heavy attack speed uh, on his rune. So he's pretty much running a standard AD page with uh, a magic resistance on the, his blues, on his glyphs. And then mm -hmm. for the rest, he's running pretty much standard. Xpeke, on the other hand, magic pen, health, and flat ability power. So he's just pretty much going all-in. He doesn't really run any armor himself. Just select for the only defensive stat in his kit being that health, also yeah. running the Thunder Lords. Yeah, and Pekka is going to start E here first. Some people do like to start Q uh, to try to kind of get some poke there, but obviously the E helps you CS a lot, uh, and it is pretty cheap. Yeah, definitely really cheap. Doesn't want to waste too much uh, Q since he's going to be yielding the push anyways. Ronopi in a good spot. Pekka keeping equal. I think equal is fine for him. is not over pushing, just playing with a single axe right now. And it, it is going to be scary. I mean, the first time Peke hits level two, if Ronald P is in a bad position, you could look to see Peke go for an all-in because I, I do think if he hits his Qs, he probably could win it. I mean, there's no better indicator of where you have to pop your Q than playing against the Draven. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. the game literally spells it out. Oh, there he hit you. it. Okay. Ronald P, so that's actually pretty smart. Ronald P uh, levels up his W second to try to be able to back off when he does get hit by that Q instead of the E. So uh, I do like that adaptation, but Peke's low on mana. Oh, he's going for it. Ignite. Reset. Rana P has continuous damage, but Peke's... He's Oom. He's Oom. One more Axe is not enough, so it's at least two. Peke's under his turret. Rana P is pushing, so we're waiting for the Relics. Peke regretting that early E usage, even on the creeps. Even at 90% mana, you just really need to keep... Um, more gas left in the tank, and now Ronald P can challenge the Relic. Yeah, and Ronald P does take the Relic away, which is, is actually really big for him. We talked about how problematic mana is for Peke, and it, at this point, I feel like he has to try to just get enough gold to have a decent back, and, yeah. and then wait it out, because he has summoner disadvantage, he has mana disadvantage. Yeah, definitely all, all true, but at level 6, he gets an ulti with slightly more impact in these direct trades. Very hard for Draven to kind of dodge that ulti damage since it's 50-50, uh, whereas Peke can dodge half of the ulti from Ronald P. Ron right now dancing on the edge of the turret range. Want to harass. Mild Celestine. Yeah. I do think Peke will have a chance to try to go for mm -hmm. that, but at this point, I think you have to play it smart. You have to just try to wait it out for your summoners. You don't want to do yep. a desperate all-in. It's so far away from actually getting to a CS uh, win that you can kind of take your time. And he's going to grab double Dorans. That is going to kind of help him. I don't see him ever going a tier. If I were Peke, if he builds another item, maybe even a Seekers or something like that, yeah. to make a lot of sense. Just some early armor to, to stop the, the kind of one-dimensional damage from the Draven coming out as well. He is back very quick. He had a good base timing there. He oh, he cancels. Stopped. What? Ooh. That was just short. That was so close. I feel like if you have Q, it's a quicker animation. I think the, the throw animation of W is a little bit slower there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that would have actually been really big, yeah. stopping this by, because Ronald P had the extra CS. He gets the long sword on top of the double Doran, so he has the extra 350 gold in effective combat stats. Yeah, but Peke has control over his side at least. Now equal out, equals out rather the relic steal, so things not looking as grim anymore. No, they certainly are, and, and as you said, six could be the time that we see him go for this. Um, and, and I think, to your point earlier about picking up some early armor, the fact that he has none in his runes kind of makes it that much more important. Yeah, and also remember that if Peke goes at 5, he can easily win that trade. Draven doesn't get that much more damage anyways, and he was winning the trade earlier, up until the point where he ran out of mana. But he is down a summoner spell now, so that is something that he has to keep in mind, and, and maybe what kind of holds him back from going for it. Um, but we could definitely see that be the case. All right, Peke, save your mana. Already dancing around the half point. Every time he lands the CS, obviously the Gorons is going to help him loads, but 
Yeah, folks I, are being wasted here. I honestly feel like, especially if you are going to wait for the summoners, don't even bother trying for the Qs that much because he doesn't have enough mana to win this all in here. He oh. has to now base probably again. Yeah. And, and that's the problem. When you're throwing out those Qs, what are you going to do if you hit it? And if you're not going to kill the guy, he's going to lifesteal back to full and you're wasting your mana. Luckily for him, Rana P is running Thunder Lords, not Warlord. So yeah. the sustain battle isn't as fierce. But right there to W from Expect. He's so used to having these kind of mid lane patterns in his play that he's not used to. Um, yeah, it's have to use so much mana going for Yolin. Exactly, and it's not the kind of trading you're used to. Uh, with double Dorans, with the Lifesteal Masteries, it's still a lot. And that, in addition to the fact that you're playing against, you're not playing against another mage, right? And you're not playing with a tier here nope. on, on Cassiopeia. Yeah, you're so used to getting higher levels. Pekka is level 6 right now, but again, we keep harping on it. The mana is the limiting factor right now. Yeah, I think, honestly, at this point, he doesn't have enough mana for an all-in, so he just has to farm to another decent item breakpoint. Mm -hmm. Base, he comes back with his summoners with his new item, and he looks for that all-in, but uh, we'll see if he disagrees. Yeah, alternatively, you can drop CS while he regens mana and just mm -hmm. goes for the all-in. Yeah, that's Raven is pretty squishy, and you know he might just return to base and pick up a null magic super efficient early on. Yeah, certainly. And, and if it goes too long, if he gets a Hex Drinker, that can be pretty devastating uh, for that all-in. But but we'll need to see a lot of micro from Ron, because he needs to juke the ulti from Expecky and pick, his, pick up his axes at the same time, keep them flowing, and dodge the damage, hopefully sidestep yep. a Q. It is so mechanically intensive for a support player. Yeah, and the summoner disadvantage is, is no longer there. So Peke has everything available. It's just a matter of mana, but this to me tells me he's, he's yeah, kind of basing. He's, he's going to base for sure. You don't dump your mana like that if you're not. Uh, so he is going to be able to just kind of push this out, grab the CS, and he does have a 1400 gold, so he could go grab a Seekers. Uh, he could go for a more aggressive option if he's worried about not having the damage. Oh, oh good that is really wrong. good. Max Wings. These guys, man, they play pro for so long, but they yeah. still have that greedy base kind of embedded in their playstyle. Ron right now suffering from being a Draven who's trying to push. Struggling those axes. Yeah. There's, uh, you could, no matter how good you get, you can always still have things to improve on. You can always still have bad tendencies. I mean, I always think it's kind of a fun example to look at Shaq in, in NBA, how bad he was at free throws, right? This guy is a legend, and he still can't shoot one of the most simple shots in basketball. Yeah, but if you have enough to make up for it. Yeah, uh, yes, it doesn't matter, yeah. See, I might base in the right place, Screpo, but you know, yeah. the, the rest of it, it <laughs> leaves a little bit to be desired. Yep. <laughs> what is your strength? I'm uh, a really good at basing. <laughs> Fantastic at basing. Child I uh, level communicate baser. well with pings. Yep. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> that's all Watch I got the minimap a lot, especially when I'm <laughs> yeah, dead. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I think we're about to see action here. Because nobody wants to play the CS game. Yeah. That's a good opener now. If you oh, have catalyst. the mana to spare, opening with W allows you to chain your spells. What do you think about the catalyst purchase here? This is this is pretty interesting. So this is this does give him more sustain and it gives him some tankiness from the HP and the, and the mana, but he may just look for the all-in here. Yeah, he's going. I think this is the approach of the catalyst. He knows he'll never finish an all-in. Because yeah. the Draven will release it. However, now with the catalyst, every level up, he'll actually have enough mana left to go for the second all-in. And this is actually pretty interesting because even if he can't all in Ron OP with enough regen, he can push him back and win on CS. Yes, because exactly. he is actually up five CS now. And especially, he's actually zoning him off pretty well with the Miasma there. Uh, and I think this is actually a really intelligent adaptation for Peke, who's kind of saying Ron OP is too smart to, to die to that all in. But is he? I mean, he has to fight back right now. This is the pressure that is forcing Ron OP forward right now. Because Peke, with the zone and the kind of the implication of a secondary all in, is now winning on CS. There's about 24 CS to go before Pekka just wins the game on 100. Yeah, and, and if he forces that all in, if Ronald P has to engage into the cast, it gives you a super easy ultimate, and that's going to be lights out. Yeah, at this point, Ron may just want to base and go for an all in, because I don't think he has what it takes in his kit to deal. Pekka's going low on mana again, though. This may be the crucial fight. Oh, he Pekka got stuns it. him, that's it, it's over. Pekka low on mana, but just one more auto should be enough. Oh, the E! He got him! Representing Spain here in Alsos, but it was so close. An additional Q being used on the wave just earlier. It just shows you how important mana is on this Cassiopeia for all ins. Yeah, that has to feel so good for Beke. The sold out crowd all behind him here. That's not a moment you soon forget. And uh, everyone is hoping that this guy keeps going further. I mean, especially in 1v1s. It's kind of yeah. tacky when like everybody starts cheering your name in a team because you feel kind of bad for your team. <laughs>